Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger and my friends. In today's video, what we're going to be doing is breaking down the big Project L trailer. So we had the trailer, obviously lots of news around it, lots of excitement. But now let's get into the weeds. Let's break things down bit by bit and kind of suss out the gameplay of what Project L will be. Now, very obviously, everything is subject to change, right? This game's probably not coming out for a year and a half at the earliest. So anything discussed here, very subject to change. But then again, perhaps we can use this as a springboard for the future to see where the game was at at the time and where it'll be at launch. So just fair warning, nothing here is permanent for sure. So first, we're going to break down some general mechanics as we can find in the trailer, and then we'll go into character specifics. There'll be timestamps in the video, so skip forward to whatever makes sense to you. Now that all said, let's start with some general mechanics. So first off here, we see Echo, and Echo is appearing to do a double jump. So this game is effectively a versus game, you know, 2v2, tag, has assist, all that kind of stuff. So double jumping, that kind of mobility certainly makes sense. Now, I guess you could say this could be Echo specific, but I really don't think so. I think this is just for everyone. This game also seems to have Gatling combos, chain combos, whatever you want to call them. So Jinx is doing a lot of stuff here in just normal, canceling into a crouching normal, canceling back into a standing normal, seemingly the same normal. Uh, most games that have chain combos, Gatling, whatever, you go up the attack base, you know, light to medium to heavy. I don't know what normal that is. Who could tell? We don't really know. But seemingly she's going into that same normal, so that's a little bit different. Could be a command normal. Maybe this game has different rules when it comes to chaining your normals together versus other fighting games. That's a bit of a wait and see. Now, a very big one here is there seems to be a push block mechanic, although a little bit different than how it's normally implemented in these kind of games. So Jinx is the one being pushed back quite a bit, not Echo. You can see he actually whiffs his final hit and then gets punished for it as well. So that's kind of the success of the push block mechanic, right? Pushing you out and then if you're overzealous, you get punished for it. Now you could say, well, how do you know this is push block? How do you know this just isn't a normal block? Well, look at the extreme distance for one, right? And now compared to Echo attacking against Darius. So Darius is much closer during the entirety of the attack string, right? versus the wild amount of separation between the two characters. With the Jinx example, Darius is pretty much near Echo. There's all sorts of shenanigans. We have assists, right? So having a push block mechanic in this game makes sense. The only difference, once again, being uh, just you getting pushed back so far. So it basically creates a sort of system where it works the way it works normally mid-screen, but once you're cornered, then perhaps you don't get the benefit, or maybe once you're cornered, then it pushes the enemy back versus you. Who can really tell, honestly, because we only got the trailer to go off of, but this is how all this reads to me. Push block in a 2v2 game with assists, that makes sense to me. So on the tag game front, we get at least one example of a tag. So no raw tags, but we have this, a launcher, and the launcher has a little bit of a cinematic angle, if you will, and Echo tags out into Ari, and Ari does a whole big aerial combo. So at the very least, you can do your combo, tag out to your enemy, and continue the combo. So reminiscent of like Street Fighter Cross Tekken or Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. This seemingly enough is get your hit confirm, and if you need to tag out for whatever reason, then you can tag out, continue the combo with the other character. This is definitely universal. Now, the thing about that launcher is this. You don't have to tag out. So here's Echo doing another combo, and he uses the launcher. It's the exact same animation, except he follows up and does a combo after the fact. So you don't have to tag out with a launcher. So uh, it could be a combination of button presses. It could be how you maybe a hold button deal, but you definitely can do a regular launcher and then combo yourself or launcher and tag out to your partner. Same animation, just different purposes, so something about it's a little different, you get to choose. Also, while we're here, there is a ground bounce mechanic. So this move by Echo bounces uh, Jinx, and he recombos. So ground bounces are a thing, and you gotta assume if there's ground bounces, there's probably also wall bounces. This one really quick here, Darius begins a run, then jumps into a cross-up. Uh, this looks like this is a super jump. I don't think his jump arc would be that fast that far. 
Uh, most games, if you have a super jump mechanic, if you run, then jump, it's automatically a super jump. That appears to me what this is. Now, this next one is spicy because we have a parry mechanic. So you can see here at the very beginning, Darius was about to attack. Ari does the parry move and he's blown back. And you can see in that blowback animation, he gets hit. There's a bit of a purple shock effect. So I don't know if that's like a punish slash counter. There's definitely something besides the usual going on there, but that is definitely a parry mechanic. Now, yes, this could be Ari only. We definitely don't know for sure, but this reads to me maybe as a universal. The Cannon Brothers, longtime fighting game fans, they definitely would figure out a way to sneak in a parry mechanic. The way this animation reads, if you try to parry and maybe it whiffs, you're probably gonna get blown up really, really bad, like stuck in an animation. It obviously connects here, but you know, there's always a give and take, right? There's a weakness for every strength. So I would think if you whiff it, you're probably dead. But in this case, it definitely connects and then you get a free combo from it. So maybe universal, maybe Ari only, but either way, definitely looks to be a strong mechanic for sure. Getting a full combo on a read, not a bad deal at all. Next up here, we can see one of the states of knockdown in this game, which is a sliding knockdown state. So Echo is being dragged across the ground, but is re-popped up by the Jinx assist and then re-comboed after the fact by Darius. So this kind of state reads to me like, if you were by yourself without an assist, maybe you couldn't follow through with this, right? Because it definitely looks like a knockdown, but you do get popped all the way back up if you have an assist. So OTG slash off the ground assists will definitely probably be a big part of combo structure. Also, at the very end, it's a small thing, but there's definitely restands in the game because at the very end, Darius actually restands Echo with his hits. Next, for some movement here, we definitely see dashing. There's air dashing, sure enough, right? It's a versus style of game. But there definitely seems to be wave dashing built into the game. So Echo, right here, he's doing a four dash and he cancels the four dash into a crouch. So that is one of the essence of wave dashing in Marvel is you just, you know, dash, 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 run, 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 and you cancel each one with a crouch. That's one way of wave dashing. So it seems to be wave dashing is a thing in Project L. Could be a character to character thing, right? Some people have really good dashes to wave dash from in uh, various fighting games, right? And some people have bad dashes to wave dash from. So we'll see how this works, I guess, but it seems like a strong and universal mechanic. So now moving on to character specifics, let's talk Jinx. First thing about Jinx here, her big pistol is definitely what we would call a beam. So beams, unlike traditional fireballs in fighting games, kind of hit all points along the way. So Echo is very deftly going over top of it, good for him. But beams tend to be very strong ways to control space in a tag fighter. Jinx, of the four characters that we know about in this build, is almost certainly the zoner. So this is a good tool for exactly that. Keep away being the name of the game. Next up, we have this whole sequence here. And what's very interesting about that is Jinx has the Demon Flip. This is a move made famous by Akuma in Street Fighter. So effectively think of this like a command jump. It's a special move jump from which you tend to have multiple options. So here, the first one we see here, we can definitely special cancel into it and she just goes for a jumping kick and then goes into more pressure, more uh, chain combos, goes for it again backwards this time into an air projectile. So we have the beam as you've seen earlier. So she definitely has multiple kinds of projectiles, but having a demon flip means her offense is also going to be pretty tricky. Like this is uh, it creates a lot of hard to block situations. Sometimes this kind of move. So on top of the variety of zoning, traditional projectile, beam projectile, all that kind of stuff, having demon flip means you always got to watch out. And the fact that she can do it backwards to gain more space, as you can see here, once again, she has zoning options in the air as well, right? Though she can do it forwards and backwards. So I think Jinx is going to be a very tricky character. Also naturally way, way, way too early to call tier stuff. But generally speaking, in fighting games, characters with a demon flip tend to be good characters. Keeping up with the zoning options here, we see some more. So after this sequence here, we have the minigun, pow pow, and fish bones, the rocket launcher. So the minigun is also in a way, probably effectively a beam. Like it probably has a little bit of travel time and the rocket definitely has a lot of travel time, 
But now we know when it comes to options, we have the minigun, we have the rocket, which is also air okay, so we can do it on the ground or in the air, and we have the beam. So it's very, very safe to say Jinx is not hurting for ranged options. And combined with various assists, I'm sure she'll be the new Morrigan, right? Soul fist pressure for days. And in our last Jinx sequence, a few interesting things are happening. One of the first ones is Jinx has a hammer now. I thought it was an axe at first, but I'm wrong on that. It's definitely a hammer. So they're definitely willing to add new traits, new stuff to the characters, because as far as I know, she's never used a hammer before. So, well, hey, there you go. Now, speaking on the sequence here, so uh, we definitely get the idea of some of her normals as we see a punch into the gunshot into the hammer. So that could very well be light, medium, heavy. Special cancel, assist call, and into the beam. Now here's a very interesting thing. The minigun actually directly combos into the beam. I know you see the assist, right? But the assist doesn't hit until after the beam connects. So it's actually a natural combo. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, chaining into it or what, but the minigun into the beam shot is definitely a combo in and of itself without an assist. And that's what we know about Jinx so far in Project L. So all I can really say is definitely a zoner. Now, next up we have Darius. So Darius is definitely the long range bruiser type as far as the four characters are concerned anyways. So starting off, this looks to be like light, medium into heavy. Medium maybe is two hits. And then he has a jumping cross up. So that'll be some mix up potential. And we see some pressure after the fact, ending with what I'm assuming is one of his special moves. This looks to be like stand medium, crouch medium, into a stand heavy, maybe? Uh, once again, the chain rules of this game, who knows, because we definitely don't. Uh, but that's where my mind is at anyways. All I can definitely say is it looks like all these big axe normals definitely hurt. Darius is the only character where we actually have a bit of a hint of how his special moves work, because it's actually showcased in the trailer. So this all looks like one button special moves. So you just hit S1, special one I'm assuming, and various follow-ups. Apprehend, so this is a long range special, uh, perhaps good for combo enders as well because it pulls the enemy into you. So if you can get XYZ string off and get your hits in, you can end with this and keep the enemy close to you so you can continue your pressure. Next up down and special is the famed Darius Dunk. Now thing to note here, one, the hitbox is super jacked up because Echo's pretty much not even near the axe yet, it still grabs him, so probably a really good anti-air. And also, Echo is bouncing after the initial hit, which definitely means you can combo after the fact. We also know, at least for Darius anyways, that specials can have follow-ups. So special one, bring in the enemy, you can end with a headbutt and knock the enemy down. So will this be like a hard knockdown, soft knockdown, who knows? The enemy seems to get up right away, but there is follow-ups for sure. If A1 is light, you gotta assume A3 is heavy. So same deal, we bring the enemy in and then we send them flying back. So heavier button, you have to assume it does more damage than the headbutt follow-up, but the headbutt follow-up leaves them close, whereas this puts them away, right? So one will be better for pressure, one will be better for damage. That's my assumption on it anyways. And then to follow up, we have this. So we see the apprehend and we see the bigger knockback, but turns out you can cancel that bigger knockback because it looks like he's going into a heavy, a heavy normal, and into a special finish. So apprehend, heavy follow-up, heavy normal, and then special move finisher. After that, we have a similar concept, just a little bit more advanced. So we're still doing apprehend into the heavy follow-up. However, what's changing here is this. So apprehend, Heavy follow-up, and then heavy normal, but going for the dunk now, which gives us the bounce, as we went talked about earlier, into another heavy normal, into what I'm assuming is the special finisher. So you can definitely get a lot of damage off some basic strikes for Darius at the very least. And we get the big final combo to show off, right? Who knows, this is like a burning all resources combo kind of deal but it's uh, definitely big and fancy, and it ends with our first and only real look at a super move, a big cinematic spin to win slash. There's some secrets to be found here though. First up, right here off the bat, these two big axe swings. 
So the first big axe wing we've already seen, that's Stan Heavy, but as you can see, there's a bit of a cinematic going on there, right? Like the camera shifts, all that kind of stuff. So what's going on there? It's not a counter hit because he already hit the enemy. Uh, what this looks like is that he can hold his normals to change the properties. So assuming that first hit there is Stan Heavy, you hold Stan Heavy and it creates a little bit of a stun slash mini crumple state because he then runs up and then gets another, assuming charged heavy normal, and combos from there. So Darius is the kind of character with the big range, big hits. Perhaps you can also hold his normals for even bigger range and bigger hits. That's how this is reading to me. From this launcher, then we get our first taste of the wall bounce. So at the very least he can wall bounce and ground bounce in the same combo as we can see here. A regular stand heavy spikes the enemy into the rolling state, which you need the assist to combo from, but hey, he can combo from it seemingly enough. We get more hits, we get another stand heavy, and then we go into our big cinematic super. So this is certainly an idea where in this game, the combo is like more optimal. This might be what a longer combo looks like in this game. And that is Darius. Next up is Ari. Now Ari kind of got the least amount of stuff in the trailer to look at here, but we have one thing, at least off the bat, is this, off the big launcher. So off the big launcher, she comes in air combos, throws a bit of an orb, and just keeps zapping back and forth. Um, the very least I can glean from this is she'll probably be like the air combo character, if anyone's gonna be, right? Uh, the thing about this orb is, I don't know if it resets her ability to go back and forth, because she does it each time. Uh, does she have a limited amount of orbs, perhaps? Because she seemingly, behind her, has three, then goes to two. Doesn't quite use the last one, just chooses a spike down instead. But from this, I can gather she's a resource-based character, and the orbs are her resource. So this fancy back-and-forth air-to-air combo is made possible, by my understanding anyways, thanks to these orbs. Every time she shoots an orb, she's allowed to reset the air combo at least one time. The only other sequence we see with her kind of proves this to be the case, as shoots an orb, resets, shoots an orb, resets, and she expends all three orbs and then goes into the big super. What we can see here, the parry mechanic, which we talked about earlier in the video, the big purple flash, which I'm assuming is counter hit state status, but right here, so hit, going up, expand orb number one, hit, hit, go back, expand orb number two, hit, hit, go back, expand orb number three, no more orbs, we have to end the combo now, going down to the ground, OTG, with the super. So Ari is a resource mechanic character, and the orbs are the resource. Going into Echo. Echo definitely got the biggest showcase of all the characters, and fair enough, because he definitely looks like a pretty crazy character. Right off the hop, we can see something special here, because it looks like Echo has a command run. So we've seen earlier, you dash, at least with Echo, right? No run normally. But as he does this, he pogos off his sword and kind of runs up and kicks, and then which leaves him in an airborne state, which he follows up with an air attack. So who knows the specifics, I guess, because I definitely don't. But at the very least, looks to me, he's got a special move that lets him run, perhaps with multiple follow-ups. Next up, we see the example beginnings of a combo. It literally looks like a light, medium, heavy starter here. Uh, we have the punch, light, next guy, medium, and this big swing launch is the heavy. And we have his chrono shift mechanic here. So we can see the clone up top, combos with Ari, and then he uses the clone to come back from the top to slam down Jinx all the way back down. So this mechanic is definitely... I, I can already tell you, make or break a good Echo player, right? Knowing how to use this will definitely be the big thing. Because even seemingly enough, basic combos, you know, uh, ABC launch, ABC spike, you know, hit, hit, assist call, it's using it as an ender. Next up, we see a little bit of a set play sequence for Echo here. So Ari does the assist for the knockdown, and he sets up his little time grenade for a tricky mix-up. So he throws it up here, doesn't hit right off the bat, hits with a cross up, and we'll talk about that in a second, and then gets the big combo. So, you know, okay, easy enough set play. The thing about that cross up is, because uh, as of the time of this recording, the King of Fighters 15 beta just ended, that is Iori's cross up. So in the King of Fighters, we call this the taco, where you jump over the enemy's head and kick backwards into the enemy, right? It hits in sync with the grenade exploding, which is creating the uh, pop-up effect, I'm sure here. But yeah, it's definitely just a little fighting game reference, right? And I would say expect a lot of these in the game. 
Project L is made by a bunch of fighting game super fans, and this here specifically is definitely a love letter to the King of Fighters character Iori Yagami. Having this style of move also means Echo is going to be very difficult to block, so watch out for the mix-ups because you will definitely get hit. Here we can see another example of his time clone moves. So this is a dashing roll. So I have to assume some manner of evasive property, uh, maybe projectile invincible, maybe full invincible. And he has the option to return back to where the roll began. So his movement is definitely gonna be very tricky for sure. Another time clone example here. So he does a rushing forward strike, which leaves the clone, at which point you can follow up with another attack. So it's seemingly that some of the uh, attacks from the clone are fixed. Uh, we have this option here where he strikes right after the fact. Another one here that launches, but it comes from the same attack. And these attacks are happening on frame one coming out of the clone. So it's not like you return the neutral straight up, then choose the follow up. So it looks to be pre-canned attacks. So you have to choose what you're going to be doing after you return to the clone. And another example of offense here. So crouching lights going into the medium and going into the heavy. Now the clone strike, but doesn't follow up immediately, follows up after the fact. So I guess that's one of the true threats of it is, is just, I always have it in my back pocket. I don't have to immediately commit to whatever time skip clone attack. I can just let the clone rock there for a hot minute. And then you have to decide and guess what I'm going to do next. Like in the immediate follow up example here. So he goes for an air attack into the special move in the air that leaves the clone, tries the cross up with the Yori cross up and then does the clone activation, but the clone activation immediately grounds him because it's the same launcher that we saw earlier as we're going through this trailer. So if apparently and seemingly enough, one of the options here for the clone will automatically ground you, right? So it'll definitely be some very tricky to block stuff. Like speaking of tricky to block, this example right here. So does the command roll, which leaves the clone as we discussed earlier, and then immediately goes into the launcher follow-up again, which re-changes his side, right? So it's definitely gonna be very tricky left, right to block this character. Maybe not so much overhead low, but on the left, right front, it's gonna be very, very difficult to block Echo. And just continuing with all this trickiness, his time grenade that we showed earlier, he can use his sword to hit it like a home run swing, basically, and then it becomes a much bigger projectile just going across the screen. So definitely a lot of uses for just one single move. From that big combo potential, because it launches so high, he could run up and just follow up from there. Also, this right here is confirmation. You can still do a launcher after a ground bounce. More combo examples. So I'm assuming medium into the launcher. Then from there, another air medium, uh, air heavy, perhaps into the chrono spike, whatever you want to call it, teleports, works back down into the launcher because the launcher automatically grounds you if you do it from your time clone, as we've learned. And then we have a heavy, maybe, into a nether clone attack. So slice, call back, slice again. Here we can see the effects of one of his time grenades. So it hits and knocks down easily enough, sure. But the knockdown seems to be slow, like you're under you know, a time stop effect. Giving Echo a lot of time to hit confirm, see the hit happen, and then dashes back, but then dashes back in for a combo. Same deal here, but on the ground, throws it, and if you give it enough time to slow and explode on its own means, then it'll just create this ghastly slow knockdown, which will give him a million years to hit confirm into anything he wants. And sure enough, the very next example here waits for the time bomb to hit, then runs in forward and converts into a combo. And our final fancy thing maybe gives a little bit more away than thinks it does. Like, so sure, yeah, he... Rolls forward, you know, does the clone, throws the projectile, teleports in the clone, hits a projectile. That's cool, right? But look at the color of the clone. The time clone is purple pinky color. Every other clone was like a greenish style of color. So perhaps that's an EX or metered clone because unlike all the other clones, he doesn't attack right out of the gate. He actually dashes forward. Unlike all the other clones we've seen so far, if you want to go into the clone, you have to do some sort of attack out of it. So this one, he just gets to run out of it, which means he doesn't have to commit to an attack. Now he does do an attack, yes, but it would seem that the power of this different style of time clone is you don't have to attack. All we can really say for sure at this point though, is this clone is definitely not like the other clones. We've already seen the command roll clone 
and that was green, not pink, as you can see right here, right? So something's definitely different. Something's definitely up with this different version of the move. At the very least, it seems to give different styles of cancels. And that's what we have so far. So obviously quite a bit to dig into it. And obviously enough, everything is subject to change. This game is coming out at 2023 at the earliest. So anything you see here could be different or gone or just completely warped in any given way when it actually comes out. But still, this gives us an idea of where they're going with the gameplay, an idea of where they're going with the characters. So if you happen to have noticed something that I missed in the trailer, by all means, please post it in the comments below. We're definitely, I'm just really looking forward to this game. It's so far away now, but I'm really looking forward to this game. Uh, to me, this is the next coming of Marvel Infinite, and I'm one of the staunchest Marvel Infinite defenders you'll find out there, because it was a great game. And I know Chun-Li face and all that dumb stuff, but it was a great game. It remains to be seen how Project L will fully turn out. Hell, we still don't even have a name for the game, right? Project L is a code name, right? But still, I'm looking forward to it when it comes out. And all that said, that's the end of the video, my friends. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And when the time comes, go out and play some Project L.